Hello and welcome back to our study of Pnei Halacha, the teachings of Rabbi Ezra Malamed, Shlita. We find ourselves end of the week, Sof Shavua Naim, as they say in Eretz Yisrael, Erev Parshas Beha Aloscha, and we continue to daven for Chalei Tzvagana Yisrael, for Shlom Lechol Petzu'e, Yisrael's safe return of our hostages, and we dedicate our learning Le'ili Nishmas, Seren Daniel Shema Ben Harav, Daron Vesheli Hashem Yakum Domo. So the chapter for today is Hakesha ben Birchas Konim Litfila Ula Karbonos. Bizman Shabbat Samikdash Hayu Kayom Hayu Akonim Mivarchim Birchas Konim Laachar Siyum Avodas Hakarbonos. So in the time of the Beis Hamikdash, the Kohanim used to make the blessing right after they finished all of their service with the Karbonos. The Kachnemer B'Torah Leyom Hashmini Shal Chanukas Hamishkan Hayom Bo Hischilu Hakonim Lavo B'Mishkan. So as we see in the Parsha in Vayikra when they finished dedicating the Mishkan, and that's when they began their work in the Mishkan, the Pasuk says, That Aharon raised his hands, and he blessed the nation, and he finished from concluding the work of the Chatas, the Ola, and the Shlom. So we see from here that first the Karbonas were done, and after they were completed, then the Brach of the Kohanim. And the reason for this is that the reason is that after we bring the karbonos, and the reason for the karbonos is an expression of our nullifying ourselves or giving over our souls to Hashem. So then after we do so, and this expression, then we're worthy of receiving His blessing, Hashem's blessing. So now that we have no karbonos and there's no Beis HaMikdash, so Chazal instituted that Berchas Konim should be said in the time of Tefillah, during Shemona Esrei, and also because Tefillah replaces, prayer replaces karbonos. As the Pasuk says. And there is a comparison between the karbonos and the tefillah, is that each has an expression of how we get closer to Hashem in our world. And just as we saw that after the karbonos were brought, then they could bless the nation, the Kohanim. So we also instituted that as after we finished davening, which is Shemona Esrei, then the Kohanim can bless us as well. To further bring this point home, the connection between the Kohanim, the Berchas Kohanim, and the conclusion of the Karbonos, so in Tefillah, since we don't have Karbonos, so we're told that the Kohanim have to make the move towards the Duchen. They have to head up towards the stage where they're going to perform the Bracha after we finish or during the time when the Chazan is saying Ritzei. Shihi ha Bracha al ha Chazaras ha because at that we say Ritzei right before Modim, that's the Bracha where we pray, we hope that we could reinstitute Karbonos. So obviously it makes more sense to do it in that point. And if a Kohen did not make the move, to head towards Duchening during the Brach of Ritzei, then he has lost the opportunity to do this mitzvah. And it's an interesting halacha, that's Paskin, it's in Shulchan Aruch, as we've mentioned, that a Kohen, if he's late, if he doesn't start making the move during Ritzei, he cannot Duchen. Ideally, he should already start to move at the beginning of Ritzei. And as long as the chazan is still in the bracha of Ritzei, so let's say he didn't move in the beginning of Ritzei, the Kohen, but he went at the end of the bracha, but until the bracha is finished, then he still has that window, so to speak, that he could start heading towards the duchen. Kohen shehis acher, what if a Kohen is late? And sometimes like this can happen. Let's say you have a long distance between the shul and the washing station. So... We're not like in Israel where they have a washing station very close by. Ours is a good distance, and especially, let's say, on Yom Kippur, and there's a lot of places you have to go. 
So it's possible that by the time the Kohen finishes washing, he realizes he's not going to make it in time for Ritze. So what should he do? Even while he's standing by the sink, he should make a symbolic step towards the duchen, towards the stage. And since he already made that step, then we consider it as if he's heading towards the platform already during Ritzei. So, then he could finish, wash, finish washing, and then he can go and duchen with everyone else. I'll just say a point that here, I always try to monitor with the Shlich Tzibur, particularly on Yontif, where we have a little bit less time, Yom Kippur is a little more time, Rosh Hashanah is a little more time, but when to send the Kohanim out, and to make sure the Chazan doesn't get to Ritzei too quickly, I try to check to see if the Kohanim are back in the room, and sometimes I'll actually slow the Chazan down if they, not all the Kohanim are in the room yet. But we realize that since they've made the move towards the Duchen, that should be good enough. So continuing this connection between Duchening and the Karbanos and the completion of the Karbanos, so Chazal teach us that just as the Karbanos were only brought in the daytime, so too Duchening is only in the daytime. And this is why we don't have duchening in Mariv. So then, based on this logic, then we should be able to duchen at Mincha, which is afternoon prayer. Very simple reason is that Chazal said that Mincha is always after a big meal. And we worry that it's possible at a meal that maybe the Kohen had something to drink of alcoholic persuasion, and we don't want him to go up and duchen under the influence of alcohol, which is completely prohibited. Because a Kohen who is drunk or intoxicated cannot do the service in the Beis HaMikdash. And he is forbidden from duchening. However, on days where there's no suspect possibility of being intoxicated, like Yom Kippur, Minchar Ne'ila, or on a fast day, then they can certainly duchen. And this is if you're davening Mincha after plag. But if they do it before Plaga Mincha, we don't. Now, and since we don't duchen except on Yontif here anyway, but this explains why on Mincha on a fast day, and we say, We don't say Shalom Rav, we say, and Sim Shalom. Part of it is because we would have the ability to duchen, would we be duchening here, and because there's no chashash of any eating, and that's why we have that policy as such. But in any event, we have these important halachas that apply to the Kohanim, and more importantly to the Am, who have the mitzvah to be blessed. So, with that, wish everybody a peaceful and restful Shabbos. Please continue davening for a highly targeted Israel. Wish Lehm the Chopetzuei Israel. Safe return of all of our hostages and continue our learning dedicated to Lili Nishma, Sarah and Daniel Shimon, and Rav Daron Vashel Yishemikom Damo. We'll see you next week. Have a great Shabbos.